Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Atkelar. A few weeks ago I thought I'd check the oil level on my old tractor. It turns out that the oil level was quite a bit low, lower than the dipstick would go in fact. So I decided to take the opportunity and do an oil change. And uh, well, <clears throat> one thing led to another. <clears throat> The drain plug has a little magnet in it. The idea is to hold back any iron that might come loose inside the engine to avoid any follow-up damage. Neat idea, but it took me by surprise to find a sizable chunk of metal stuck to the magnet. What to do next? With something that large broken off inside the engine, I don't want to run it, much less use the tractor. I need to know where it came from and what part might or might not need replacing. Thus I decided to take off the oil pan to investigate. This is where I found out that the oil pan is in fact part of the front axle mount. In order to remove it, according to the service manual, you have to check up the tractor in the middle, split the front and remove the radiator section with the axle in one piece. Another decision was made. I am alone and I don't have the tools or the space to safely remove one-fifth of a tractor at once. So I shall disassemble the engine bit by bit until I can remove the axle and oil pan. I wanted to paint that thing for years anyway. Before going deeper I disconnected the battery and draped the cloth over the terminals just to be sure that there would be no sparks flying. And before I bump my head again, getting rid of the hood. The exhaust manifold bolts are rusted over. I added rust solver before I even tried to undo them. While the actual exhaust came off ok, the manifold screws are blocked by the manifold. I needed to get a special bent wrench for them. Draining the coolant and unhooking the radiator hoses. Removing the coolant return line, starting with the thermostat sensor. Unscrewing the air filter. Some of the washers haven't aged well at all. Headlights are next. The paint is flaking off on the inside. Yuck! And back to the engine. Here's the combined rocker cover intake manifold. I used my hoist to pick it up. But it snagged on something, which turned out to be the injector lines, which were held in place by the intake screws. Whoops! At least now we can see inside the engine well, nothing broken off on this end. Checking up the tractor was also not quite according to safety guidelines. The check and stand I have are rated for the weight, yes, but the check is too short, so I had to use a piece of wood from the scrap pile as a shim. I also tried to add a piece of wood between the tractor and the stand, but that did not work out well. Here I am undoing the main bolts that hold the front axle mount to the rest of the frame. I seem to have lost the footage of the 1 inch water pipe wrench extension required to get them moving.
The starter has some beefy wires. It supposedly pulls just about 350 amps at 12 volts after all. The tires can go out of the way next. But for some reason, two nuts wouldn't budge. So, back to the water pipe. I'm trying to get the axle as light as possible before removing it. That includes the fenders. The cooling system includes a roller blind mechanism to get the engine temp up faster on a cold winter day. Not that I use it, but the wire is stretched all across the engine and it also collected some souvenirs from various harvests. I did try to unscrew the steering linkage, but the bolts are actually cones that make for a zero play connection and now are probably rusted together to form a unified piece of metal. I did bend a screw in a perfectly good disc puller. To get the axle away from the steering column, I unscrewed the linkage with the contained adjustment screw. Before removing the nuts, I secured the heavy block on my engine hoist, just in case. The radiator would not come off without a fight. The fan is nested inside a shroud, so it would only move axially and all of the screws holding the shroud were rusted solid. After moving that front block a bit, I could ease out the radiator. And with quite a bit of wiggling, the front piece finally came loose. I can now finally open up the oil pan. After trying some creative ways of gaining access, I discovered two threaded holes that would allow screws to push open the pan. I could not see much from underneath, but I discovered the reason the oil was so low was probably that the dipstick was bent. I always thought that's how it should be, but it should actually be straight to, you know, dip into the oil. So the disassembly continues. Rocker assembly. Air filter. water pump, including the last bit of coolant left in the engine. The head bolts made me grab my trusted pipe again. And the head didn't come off lightly either. One of the bolt holes was a bit, um, rusted. Next, the fuel system. Battery box and fuel tank. The hydraulic pump was a special challenge. The lines go to the rear, where the tank and related stuff is, but I did not want to drain that oil just yet. Counting on gravity here, as the rear is now lower than the front. Screws in the head start holes seemed to me the most secure way of holding that engine block. A 
And here we go. The clutch is connected to the gearbox, but not for long. Finally, enough room to remove the starter. Ladies and gentlemen, the clutch, including one particularly mangled bolt, that was some work to remove. To remove the flywheel, I used an old Allen wrench as a stopper. Those screws are on tight again. Also, the flywheel contains a huge amount of gravity. After another set of extremely tight bolts on the clutch housing, I finally could mount the engine to my engine stand and have a look at the underside, to see the same obstruction as before. <sighs> The lower part of the block would not come loose, as it is held in place by the crankshaft seal ring. To remove the 30mm bolt from the belt pulley, I had to lock the crank in place, using a trick that Yoti suggested. Thanks, pal! It took a bit of prodding to find out, but the last piece holding the two shells together was actually the pipe from the oil filter. And I finally have a clear view of the crankshaft, but not of the pistons. So close! The counterweights on the crank are interfering, so I had to remove one set of them. After carefully pulling out the camshaft, I could take off the timing cover as well. Now that I have a clear view of the entire engine, I still have no clue where that piece of metal came from. It might have been... foreign? If I ever catch that mechanic that left that piece in there, well, I got my pipe. Anyhow, that's it for part one of this sub-series. Part 2 is going to be cleaning and painting, and part 3 should be reassembly. Hopefully with some nice tuk 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 footage at the end. Claws crossed! The train plug? Choo choo! Nope. Drain. 